Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Sip, sip and, share. and Share. Sip, sip, sip and sip Share. Let's and share. go. Sip and share. Sip, sip and share. Hey, Henry. Yeah. Are you ready? For what? To sip. Sip what? Sip and share. Hey, let's go. I like that new That's song. That's way better than let's go. I let's don't go. get it. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. All right. Let's go where? Where, baby? Let's go ahead and get this episode started. <laughs> okay. Let's get the episode started. That's the first thing I agree with today. Oh, um, so what are we sipping on? Do you know? I don't know. I know it's some tea of some sort that you made. It tastes pretty good. Uh, what kind of tea am I drinking? Smell it. Let's see. He should be able to tell because this tea is so, was it poignant? No, pungent? What is pungent it? or poignant. Is it both? Pungent can be like a strong smell. Poignant is like straight to the point. So oh, it could work well, in both ways. Both. So I smell orange blossom. Oh my gosh. Maybe, <laughs> maybe my nose is off. <laughs> you don't need to be on a cooking show at all. So this is a peach lemon <laughs> herbal tea. So a while back, he bought me this tea kettle. And in mm. the middle, there's like this colander where you put the fresh tea in instead of tea bags and then you boil the water, you know, kind of let it sit or whatever. And I mean, if you could smell it, you would. Yeah. Way yeah. better than tea bags. It's good, man. Way better. It's oh, good. babe, you drunk. Oh, you did. You don't bad. even know. We my are bad. in a new season of life and you are forgetting my everything. Bad. You're supposed to tell us. You told me to smell it. So I started sipping. Can't share until you sip. <laughs> it ain't called. Toast and share. <laughs> and we have um, agave syrup. A little more for him, a little less for me. Syrup? Where are you from? Anyway. I guess we need to go ahead and get this thing moving, man. We actually have a lot to talk yes, about. And before we, we start, do. I just want to go ahead and say this is our unpopular opinion. It's probably, it's know. our opinion, but it's going to be unpopular to a lot of people. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be some people that are going to come after us with this particular video because you are loyal to these individuals. Um, I want to just state this to start. Uh, if you have watched us, if you know us, you know we love to travel. We love yep. vacation. We love to just see the wonderful majesty of the world, yep. right? Traveling. Sometimes that might be all inclusive. A lot of times that's cruising. Yep. Uh, we've been cruising um, pretty periodically since 2016. Mm -hmm. um, we have cruised between two lines. Yep, but today lines. we are talking about one line one in line. particular, one line. We are going to be talking about how Carnival Carnival Cruise Line ruined it Christmas. ruined Christmas for us. Ruined Christmas. I will tell you, I am loyal to companies that are loyal to their customers. And we can't forget where we came from because, you know, our very first cruise was probably Carnival. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're, we're going to stick straight to Carnival on yep. this one. I want you guys to know we are gold members with Carnival. Yep. Um, we are well on our way to becoming platinum members. We have taken seven cruises in totality. We have cruised with older ships, smaller ships. Seven with Carnival. Newer yep. and bigger Yep. ships so when we tell you all of this information we're taking this from all of our experience with carnival which was like i said small ships older ships up to the newer bigger ships yep. so we've had a wide variety of experience we've done Three-day cruises, four-day cruises, six-day six day cruises, cruises seven and seven-day yeah. cruises with Carnival. So wide variety of range. It's not like just some fluke. We've got yes. the, the data from one end to the other to come up with our final decision. All right. So it's so much that we have to tell you that we have to talk about. But I'm going to do y'all just like uh, if you come in for an evaluation, they usually try to start out with the good stuff. So... We took a carnival cruise on carnival celebration. We left 
Miami port on December 24th on Christmas Eve. I'm going to tell you, we well, we're going to tell you the good things first, but it's so much we had to write it down. So excuse us if we have to look down. Oh, I let's, will. let's start with the good. Let's, let's start, start with, with the good. good stuff. I want to start with, we're going to start with the positives, right? One positive that jumped out for me, I love music. I love dancing. I'll do the line dances and all the other stuff. DJ Q on Carnival Cruise, the celebration ship. That dude is probably, they call him the best DJ on the seven seas, and I will concur. I will concur with he that. He had that yeah. ship rocking from a music perspective. I love seeing people that are passionate about what they do. He is passionate about being a DJ. He is a great DJ, probably one of the best DJs I've ever seen on a cruise. All right, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. i never seen a freaking DJ have a sell-away party, and he's playing Kirk Franklin gospel music. He's playing gospel music, mixing it in, and it was so fun. The dance floor stayed full. People were just enjoying themselves. The cruise director, he really wasn't even doing nothing. The mic was handed over to the DJ. DJ the was DJ killing DJ was hosting, was jamming, was dancing, mixing, everything. DJ Q, man. DJ Shout Q out. was the highlight of our cruise. He he made it tolerable that we had to stay on there seven days. Yep. DJ Q and one more individual made it tolerable, and that was Happy Cole. Happy Cole. Oh, man. Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk. So you go, to, you get on these ships, you see all these comedians and whatnot. We've seen some pretty decent comedians on, ship, on ships, but the comedian Happy Cole, C-O-L-E, killed it, destroyed it. We went to see him three times, I think. Yes. Three times on yes. one cruise uh, in a seven-day period. Comedians... Uh, you need to take notes from him. He is like, I think he said he was the first comedian that was hired by Carnival. By Carnival, that's by Carnival. What said. Dude's still killing it. So DJ yeah. Q, from a music perspective, comedian perspective, happy cold for sure. Let, and let me say uh, this. I have to also give Carnival Celebration kudos for this. They offer so many co uh, comedy shows. They had the Limelight Lounge, where it was totally de dedicated to PG shows, and then the Punchliner, where it was dedicated to the R-rated and the mature audience shows. And then sometimes they would have late night mm -hmm. shows in the theater um, that were dedicated to the adult crowd to allow even more people to come. Yep. When we were on this ship, we had a total of five comedians, two that started um, – and then about Wednesday, when we stopped, it swapped out. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know if it's think it's a celebration. Carnival celebration. It was celebration. not a celebration. <laughs> it was not. Yeah, I, I changed the name of that ship. But um, when we stopped at a port, we picked up three and the other two left. And um, yeah, Happy Cole, out of the five, yeah, Happy Cole. Uh, you'll hear about the rest later. Yep, um, yeah, we got a lot to talk yeah, about, later. so we're going to breeze so through some of this. let's keep on talking about the good stuff. We're going to keep breezing through. So some of the uh, attitudes of some of the staff members that were on the cruise, one person in particular, he was a, a photographer. Uh, I, think, I think his name was Giolani. Um, he was very fun, very, very high-spirited. You know, when we took our photos, he made us laugh. He just really enjoyed his job. So the photography... Him yeah. in particular, and he and was he good. stepped out of, outside of that mole of turn your head, right? Do you know how this. they make you do you, and turn your head and grab you, grab and you, her hand like that, and then you look at them pictures and you never buy them and you're like, why did I? Yeah, just pose he like did that? a really funny picture with us, and it, it was really good. He was a good photographer. All right, next one. I want to talk about the room, the room itself in particular, the shower. The shower was actually a decent size. I was able to turn around in that shower. Yeah, I didn't hit my bottom or elbows or anything like that. The So, again, we're talking about the size, size. of the shower was good. Size. Also, the size of, uh, of the closet, and the closet had customizable shelves. Yeah. So, yeah. let's say if I wanted to use this shelf to, uh, to fold clothes or have folded clothes lay on, right. I could, or I could pop it up. Right. And allow for it to be longer to like hang his jackets or my dresses or whatever. And there was ample enough space for like uh, drawers yep. for storing your stuff, all of that. So Carnival did a really good job on the 
you know, the customizable closet. Absolutely. So that new ship, that that was a plus definitely right there. Yep. I, I told you guys I enjoy the music, you know, and things like that. But I also enjoy the drinks. Uh, historically, Red Frog drinks you know, from the Red Red Frog bar, I haven't really been that impressed with. But on this particular ship, Carnival Celebration, the drinks at Red Frog, actually, they were very good. They had stepped it up from previous cruises. They they definitely stepped it up. Um, You had... This is, again, something I want to put a pin in to talk about later. It was stepped up as long as you found the right bartender, true. I feel. That's true. I as agree with that. As long as you found the right bartender. I agree with that. Food. Uh, we'll just stick with this one in particular. Guys. Everybody has to go get those guys' burgers or whatnot. So, again, we're talking about positives right now. Uh, my wife does not eat pork, beef, and all that other stuff. So, you want to talk about the veggie burgers? Yeah. So, they actually, guys, offers veggie burgers. Um, it's a little downside to it that you have to stand in line and wait for like five to seven. One day it seemed like almost 10 minutes for them to cook it. Um, cause they don't keep those ready, but at least I had an option to be like, Hey, I can get a burger too. So yep. I was able to get a veggie burger at guys. Yep. We touched on this Added that part. next on the list <laughs> food, the food that we paid for actually, I would say it doesn't cost that much. It's actually affordable. Yeah. Notice the words we're using out of our mouths. The food that we paid for, not the food that was included. The food that we paid for did not break our pockets. But why did we have to pay for food? Yep. That is the question. That is the question. Uh, unfortunately, we have exhausted our list of positives. Yeah. So here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and say this again. I'm a carnival fan. Been on Carnival Cruises. I love their directors. I love their theme of of celebrate, have fun. I love it. I love that they're affordable and that it allows for more people to get the opportunity to experience cruising and bringing their families on. Mm -hmm. But for some of the same reasons that I love it <laughs> are the reasons that I doggone hate it now. Doggone. Oh, wait a minute. I doggone dislike it. Doggone. This was the worst cruise selling that we have had. Yes. And I told you, seven carnivals. Now, I didn't tell you how many on other lines, but seven carnivals, gold members, making our way to platinum. Yep. And this was the worst. Every nightmare possible seem to happen on this cruise ship before we get started i do want to say kudos to you carnival mm -hmm. that you try to have guidelines right that you try to have rules that you try that you try but something is something's slipping something is falling <laughs> to the wayside valiant valiant effort carnival um Again, we know where we came from. We started with Carnival, so on and so forth. So we're just going to go down this next list. Oh, and Lord. I am simply going to call it Issues. Issues. Need for improvement. Need for improvement. Need for improvement. And in no particular order, issue number one, the room attendant. You know how you get on to, you go on a cruise ship and you go down to the hall and you finally find your room and there's like the room attendants, they're standing by. It's like, hello, my name is so-and-so. Hi, Miss Letitia. Hi, Mr. Henry. So on and so forth. And, you know, they get your name down and you're getting ready to go to a show and they're just like, enjoy your show. Or you come back and they're like, how was your show? And you get out. It's, 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 it's just that, that personal connection that you have with the room attendants. Uh, we didn't really quite have that with this one. Um. Not at all. Um, there was no formal greeting um, at all. I'm sorry, babe. And we may have it further on the list. I can't see it. I don't have on my glasses. But I do want to backtrack just to put things in order for a second. So if we get to it, skip it. Um, let me just say this at when we got on the ship, guys. Getting on was okay. No issues. Right. We weren't pestered by people wanting us to take photos or anything like that. Mm -hmm. A couple of the workers even were cheerful, even though it was Christmas Eve. Right. Right before we stepped foot on that plank, y'all know what I'm talking about. The one that connects the uh, port to the ship. Mm -hmm. There was a worker standing right at the edge 
an older guy, and he was singing, I am dreaming of a white Christmas. I'm going to put the video in here. And that was the best greeting we got. But mind you, we weren't on, we the, weren't ship on the ship. <laughs> we weren't on the ship. We walked across that plank. We're like, we're on Carnival's biggest ship besides Jubilee, which is about which came out. Um, this is gonna be grand. This is gonna be awesome. We walk across the plate. We happy. Ain't a fun member in sight. <laughs> All we see is a lazy dog with a security person. Ain't nobody saying, Welcome, welcome. Come on aboard. Celebrate, celebrate. Nothing. None of that. It was like crickets. None of that. I thought I was walking into a library. It was nothing. The fun team was somewhere off having fun. I guess so. We didn't see see anything. It, it was anymore. nothing. So it was like, oh, so we're on the ship. And yeah. Just, yeah. And we got onto the ship probably about 140. So we weren't the last group. I mean, we were like an in-between group. Um, but nobody, no director, no fun team, no fun squad. Um, nobody welcoming us. Like I said, a security with a yep. dog and a dog look bored. Yep. Um, yep. And we, like you said, we go to our room. We get our keys. We're going in, checking out the room. And uh, we don't even get greeted by our room attendant. Yeah. The way we found about our room attendant, you, you want to tell that? Well, I don't know. We got too much to talk about. I'm, I'm trying to stick to my list, so I, I'm trying, so I don't bounce back and forth too much. So if I forget it, we'll go back to it. I will tell you, we walked into the room, and we looked at our sheets, and they were stained. The sheets were stained. Uh, I think they they had hairs in the bathroom, yellow stains on the sheets. Um, and so, which is to your point, uh, when we find out about our room attendant, we summoned someone to come and change the sheets because they looked like they hadn't been changed or they just weren't cleaned very good. That's how we figured out who our room attendant was. And once he actually came into the room, it was an apologetic, hey, I'm sorry about your sheets, but he still, uh, that didn't I recall, didn't he like, hey, I'm your room attendant, so on and so forth. Yeah. So... He's been very nice and generous. I'm, I'm not, I'm a very clean person. I always check out everything, but I don't mind putting in a little elbow grease to make it up to my sure. standards, guys. She's going to clean it anyway. So I period. was wiping down, you yeah. know, our drawers and our shelves. And I was like, mm, this is a little dirty. Yep. Mm, this is a little dusty. Like, you know, and then like, you know, you go and you flip the toilet down because you got a flush like that. And you look and it's like little pieces of hairs and you're like one hair yeah but golly <laughs> then you look in the shower and you see somebody's scrubber still up there the little round scrubber yep. and i'm like hold up now then so i'm like let me the check little this uh lo a loofah thing what do you call it yeah, yeah the loofah yeah. yeah um and then so i was like uh let me check this bed on the outside of the bed with little brown specks all over it and i'm like eh. I mean, it could have gotten washed and could have just not come out in the white. Pull the bed back. You got little round, dingy yellow stains. Yep, yep. I'm trying, like, my, trying my best to stick to my list. But now now you rem reminding me because uh, I'm, I'm looking at our list and I'm trying to keep them uh, grouped as best we can. But I think after we left the room or before we got to the room, we were kind of in the common areas, in the public areas. Oh, and I shit. think that's when we saw dirty hallways. On It was the very first day, by the way. Dirty hallways, cups. First moments. Na yeah, first moments. First cups, moments. Cups, napkins, potato salad on the ground. Yes. You know, things like that. And I know I'm like, man, they turned these ships very quickly. The passengers that were on it just got off, and you get a small window to get in there and clean it up so that we can get on. But it was dirty. Like, first impressions, right? Yeah. It's just first this, impressions. This, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. These were the steps walking from getting on this to the ship. We got on, and we were like, oh, our room's ready, so let's just – go on and as we walk we're seeing all of this trash on the floor food on the floor people just leaving their drinks mm -hmm. mind you that's not carnival's fault i i understand that the workers can only do so much yep. but i'm also accustomed to the fact that the workers are promptly getting things up yep yep um which you're gonna find out later that that promptness was just lacking. Right. Um, so all the way up to our room, yes, it was dirty. And inside our room, yes, it was dirty. And the only way we figured we figured out Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes, 
oh, that must be our room attendant. Right. He never gave us a card, never introduced himself, nothing. Now keep in mind, and I actually meant to say this from the very beginning. We are <laughs> we are we are far from being snobs. Like we are not snobbish by any means. You know, most of the cases when we are going out and supposed to be enjoying uh, being treated and taken care yeah. of, most of the time we don't because we're like, no, 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 we'll get it. We got it. We'll take care of it. You know, no, you don't have to do that. You know, that's how we normally are. But when you, as you mentioned, you know, this was our seventh Carnival Cruise. We know what normal looks like. Yes. We know what the standard is. And so when you're used to a certain thing and you don't get that, then you go, something's not right. This just isn't how it's supposed to be. So on that note, the first night we ate in the dining room, uh, again, you know what the standard is supposed to be. You know what normal is like. Well, do you want to talk about our first eating experience? Because the first night, we didn't eat in the dining room. We chose to eat in Chebang. Oh, yeah. 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 We chose to eat in Chebang. And I'm stopping him to bring that up. And if I... If we're going all over, I'll let you look at the list. I just at want the end. we can edit it later. Yeah. I just want to. I'll, let, I'll let you look at the yeah. list at the end, and you'll say, "Oh, we forgot this." Okay, yeah. but the first night we ate at Chebang because we were like mm, dining room. Let's just you know do that the other nights. Um, you get one free night of eating in Chebang. Your other nights thereafter are eight dollars per person. Not a bad cost mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, they were able to slip us on in there because. We did. We had a certain time to dine, and what I did not like is even though we had a certain time to dine, we had to stick to that even for some of the specialty right, restaurants. Right, right. And I was like, why do I have to stick to 745 if I'm going to a specialty? I should be able to go there when I want to. But Shebang, Colt, the, uh, the uh, Italian one, yeah. they act just like the dining room. You're supposed to stick to your time. Right. But the lady got us in there. All that to say, needless to say, everything was pretty good until <laughs> night fell. I'm just gonna da, tell you da, like da, I'm just gonna da, tell you a lot of gate. I'm gonna tell you a lot of gate. <coughs> by this time, it's it's Christmas Day. By the time it rolls into the next day, so we ate Christmas Eve, and then next day is Christmas Day. I got food poisoning on Christmas Day. I'm just gonna tell you, I was food poisoned on Christmas Day. It's probably about midnight, probably about twelve forty something a.m. And you know how you're sleeping. Just imagine you're sleeping like this and somebody calls your name and you go and you will probably do something like this. Like, huh? That's how I felt in the pitch black darkness of my room. And I felt like my stomach called my name and I was sound asleep. And I felt like, here, you might want to get up. And I think that was my stomach talking to me. I sat there right there, laid in the bed with my eyes open, like what's going on? And I sat there for about another 45 seconds. And yeah, I was in the bathroom vomiting. Well, about to vomit. But, you know, doing some other stuff, all that other stuff. I had no idea why at the time, but we had only eaten at one place. Bottom line is, I'm very certain that I had food poisoning from yes. that night before. If you heard it, it was food poisoning. <laughs> this is Christmas Day, mind horrible. you. So when we so, say carnival ruined our Christmas, this is yeah, Christmas Day. So, so I woke up to a bunch of mess. Um, <laughs> and... It just continued and continued and continued. At first, you know, you think it's a one-off, right? But it just kept on no eating, no nothing, no nothing. And this man just could not get it. No drinking, no nothing. This man could not get it together. Mind you, I don't eat beef. He had a steak from Shebang that night. He also had lettuce wraps. So it's got to be the lettuce wraps. Or that steak. Had my stomach that was the up. only thing we had different from one another. Um, and I was like, yeah, that, that probably was food poisoning because it was like, it was a domino effect for him. Um, it was pretty hard. Pretty hard. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and leave that right where it is. Um, I was we, sick. <laughs> we, were, we were able to finally pull it together after dosing him with a lot of Gatorade. A lot of Gatorade. A lot of like tea to try to help his stomach and everything and how he was feeling and just not eating dry all day. Like, okay, you can't have a croissant. That's it. Um, and that, you know, it just guys anyway. So we finally get to Christmas night and we're able to get our clothes on and dress up like Mrs. Santa Claus and Santa and give them a little dapper effect. And we say, you know, it's elegant night. We're going to eat in the dining room. 
All right. Now we're talking about there the dining go. room. <laughs> we get into the dining room. All right. And we know what we're used to. We know what the standard is and how it's supposed to be and how things normally operate. Uh, the things that we, we jotted down because we were jotting down notes. We're like, we got to document this stuff. Uh, the waiter did not introduce himself. Normally they might come over and say, hey, my name is so-and-so. I'm going to be your waiter today. This is my assistant, blah, blah, blah. Period. We got none of that. Like none of it. We and and I'm just going to add real quick. These were our assigned tables. Yep. So you were, oh, if, yeah. if I ate there, you were going to be my waiter yep. every single night. Yep. So it's not that this was just your time down and you get anybody, even though at those times they usually introduce as well. Right. This was going to be our everyday waiter staff. Yep. They did not introduce themselves. That's right. We got there. We ordered drinks because, you know, we had the drink package or whatnot. It was like, hey, just take advantage of the drink package. Order drinks. Tick, 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 tick. Never got the drinks. Some food came out and we had to re-ask for our drinks. Bottom line is, hey, did I our drinks? And he's like, oh, oh, yeah. Everybody around us, other folks getting drinks that didn't came in after. Yeah. Nothing. Drinks did not come when we are normally used to having them come. We had to ask for them again. Um, said the order came out wrong and ended up, uh, we having we actually had to leave without getting dessert. So the order came out wrong. Number one, I think my, my lovely bride wanted the turkey. She said no gravy or gravy on the side or something like that. When the plate finally did come, cause it took a while, by the way, it took a while for the food to come. When the plate finally did come, here comes this amazing plate of turkey with gravy on top. All over, <laughs> all over. He said, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. They put great. I, I, I'm not. <laughs> Guys, I know, I know people say, oh, those people who want to be vegan, want to be this, want to be that. They're so difficult. I'm not that person. Yep. Um, I still eat poultry and I still eat seafood, but beef and pork, no. Yep. So I know any sauces, any gravies, I ask for it on the side so that I'm not being that picky person that's like, oh, I need it like this and I need this like this. Or I ask for it not to be on there at all. So I said, I'll take the turkey dinner with no gravy or just put it on the side. Yep. Um, so I didn't ask anything special, just just stopping you from doing something. Exactly. And here I come with a whole plate of gravy. So first dinner experience in the dining room, waiter didn't introduce himself. The drinks didn't come. We had to re-ask for the drinks. The order came out wrong. And the big piece is it took way, way too long to get our food. Like way too long. Yeah. We were not planning to go see a show anytime soon. By the time we actually got our food, we were like, well, we might as well just go see the show. We actually decided not to wait for our dessert. That's how long it was taking. It just took a long, well, I, I'm not exaggerating, a long time. Well, not only that, we did not finish our food at all yep. because it was nasty. It was nasty. The, the food appetizers, good. I will give them a point. We ate though. The appetizers yep. came out pretty quick because they have little stations for the waiters to make the apps that looks like the yep. soups and things. Um, but then the wait between the apps and the entree was so long. Very long. When I got my turkey, guys, when I finally got it right, because he, he gave it to me to eat on, and I'm like, eh. and then he went and got me another plate, but that came way later. Um, the turkey had fat. All, I mean, I like literally was like going to spit it out. Um, yeah. yeah. You so, would imagine if your food's going to take a long time, you're like, man, this food's going to be good. Just imagine waiting a long time for the food, and it still ain't good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone. Food yeah. went good, so I food the poison the night before. And then that happened. And so we declared, you know what? We're just not going to go to the dining room. We'll just go and we're just going to pay for our food. We're just going to go to Emeralds. We're just going to go to the seafood chat. Yep. We're just going to do all of that, babe, because I'm, I'm not going back to the dining room. Yep. But we said one exception. We will go on Elegant Night to do the lobster on the second Elegant Night. Yep. That was we, we made our mind up because it was that bad. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of stuff taking a very long time and, and on the subject of time, the shows, the events, they just were not starting on time. <laughs> like for me, I'm all about time, time, time anyway, probably more than what I need to be. I'm like timeless, blah, 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 you know, whatever. But, you know, the crew, you're supposed to kick back and relax. But at the very least, if you're looking at your schedule on your phone and you say mm-hmm. this circus the circus is oh going to start. Not the circus. <laughs> the circus. Not where the circus is. Circus. Circus is going to start at whatever o'clock. A comedy show is going to start at whatever o'clock. And you're looking at your watch like, mm, 10 minutes passed and we haven't started with show X. The shows just didn't start on time as they well, should. Well, let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and put it out on the table. 
didn't start on time, nor was it the correct show. Man. So you got to remember that seating opens up about 45 minutes prior to a show. So you're already sitting, you're getting your drinks for about 45 minutes, and you're waiting on this wonderful show to start. And then it starts a little bit late. Right. And then it's not even the show. Unfortunately, tonight we're not going to be able to do the circus. And you see this ringmaster guy comes out singing some <laughs> doggone showman song that you're tired of hearing. So. Not once. Yeah. This but happened twice. to us twice because they said they were going to do the circus. And so we're like, okay, now let's go see the circus this time. Same thing happened. I I, prom- I kid you not, guys. I, I felt like I was in a circus. I know y'all don't believe us. They had it all set up. The big top. I got video. If of you it. were on that cruise, you know what I'm talking about. And the second time we went, we done sat here for over 45 minutes and they come out and say they can't do it again. And they're going to do Rhapsody, whatever, something. Yeah. And it he, wasn't a circus. He comes back out singing the showman again. Yep. I will tell you, too, um, another issue that I like to highlight is the fact that Need to uh, improve. <laughs> there's this grand spectrum theater. There is no bar service. You know how you get in there and you get ready to see a show or, or maybe uh, all of the comedians are going to do like a wrap up or something like that. And you got the people coming by like, let me get you a drink. You know, you want to get a drink right before the show starts. There was no bar service at all in the Grand Spectrum Theater. You had to literally leave out, go to the casino and get in line and try to order a drink. And, and the casino bar is not like right, right there. Right. You're walking through. Depends on which door you go out of. You might be walking through smoke. Yep. And then you get to the casino. It was very evident because I've been on a carnival ship before where there was no bar in that particular facility, but they had waiters and waitresses right. and they would go get the yep. drinks yep. or they would sh- set up makeshift bars. Yep. It was evident to me at that point, this ship not enough is not manned not, properly. Not enough people. So here's the problem. Yep. We're not getting the greetings. We're not getting the cleanliness. We're not getting the promptness because this ship is not manned it's not staffed. properly. It's not staffed properly. And these people are tired. They're tired. And they let you know. They had low morale. They let you know. Low self-esteem. I'm just telling you, the morale on... So, shout out to the people that were on the ship, the staff members that were on the ship trying because we don't know. How, they probably was working a long time. We heard on numerous occasions, like, I had enough time to take me a 15-minute break eat something, take a shower and back to work. Like we were seeing people working at coffee shops like at seven to eight AM who would still be there later on that night and just tired. Just tired. So the morale was really low on the ship for yes. the staff members were there. And the staffing was really low on the ship. And I think those two things were actually yeah. related. And and you know what what got me? It was just too evident. It was like going to Disney World and Mickey Mouse is frowning. <laughs> um <laughs> And I'm not saying they have to act or put on or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. I'm the captain. I am very courteous to people and, and I I love people who work hard and I try to do my best to help. Like he said, if we're at a dinner table, I stack my stuff up. I'm saying thank you. Yeah. I provide extra gratuity to people. Yep. Um leaving any anything possible, talking to them. Um, trying to make them laugh as well as they make me laugh. Yep. So we try to reciprocate that, but we did not get it at I'm all. As it. a matter of fact, if I was walking one way and a worker was walking the other way, I had to move out the way. They yep. wouldn't move out my way. Yep. I was like, I'm not used to this. I'm used to like, come yep. on, ma'am, or come on yep. by, ma'am. And they might not even be carrying <laughs> nothing yep. or doing nothing. Yep. It was like, Honestly, they look like a bunch of zombies. Yeah, I'm gonna did. be honest. Yeah, I, I, yeah, they they were tired. They were they were tired. They were hot and tired. Speaking of hot and tired, uh, the elevators oh and the clubs. God. Oh my god! They oh. didn't have no AC. You get in the elevator, and what you hear people going is "Woo, it's warm Don't in here." Let it be 15 million <laughs> people up in there, and it's like, "Woo, please go, keep going, please don't stop at every floor." It was somebody didn't pay the bill or something. Turn on the AC in the elevators. Turn on the AC in the clubs. What's going on? We went to the club one time. I ain't going back. It was hot. It was hot. Yep. Hot in here. It was Nelly's song <laughs> the whole her, baby. time. Her. Hot in her. Hot in her. But speaking of elevators, them things were slow. 
slow and a couple of them was broken but man you know I, elevators are gonna be slow period especially on the first day everybody's first trying day, yeah. everybody's trying to get the yes, elevator so on day. and so forth but about the third second fourth whatever day on the cruise you shouldn't be waiting for ever and ever and ever and ever for an elevator we walked we got some miles and some steps in walking up and down the elevators were slow and guys i kid you not a lot of times we're like let's walk because of the fact that we like to kind of get steps in because we're eating good and we're doing all this. We lost we lost weight on this cruise, guys. Yep. We lost weight because we didn't eat good yep. and we had to walk a lot. Yep. And this ship, because of how it is designed, walking sometimes was like, I don't want to walk. Because you have to go up and then you got to go all the way across somewhere. Yep. Um, elevators, I kid you not, yep. were slow. Yep. And it's almost fights with people <laughs> to get on elevators. I'm not lying. Uh, a lady almost ran this man over with her scooter because she was like, it's too packed in here. She tried get to, out. She, she tried, tried to back push him, him off, out back with him her off scooter. With scooter. Yeah, it was, it was, she tried to push him out with it was, her scooter. It was an interesting cruise. Like, yeah, I know we talked, about, we talked about some of this a little bit already. But, yeah. you know, a part of that low staffing, I think, led to uh, neglect in other areas. Um, just going back to the cleanliness thing, you know, there was a day that we moved, we went to a port and they said, Hey, we're going to clean the balconies on this day oh, or whatnot. God. Those balconies never got clean. Number one, there was a spot on our balcony on the floor when we first got on the ship. So it was never clean before we got on. And when we left that port and they said they were going to be cleaning the balcony. It was actually dirty. It was dirty. <laughs> <laughs> It had hair and stuff. It was dirty I hair. I was like, I thought, because he said, babe, I thought you said they would clean the bath. Because I said, I, I thought I smelled some chlorine. They or cleaned it with hair and other dirt. It was dirty hair. You're right. I know. I never thought the, the balcony was dirtier when we came back on the cruise than when we got off at the port. It was dirty. I don't know if it seeped down from the floor above us yep. or. I, I don't know. It, it was never clean. Too, yeah. too, too low of staffing members, you know, and that's when neglect happens. Uh, I, we ordered two drinks one night. It was kind of like we're going to take one more drink, get ready to go back to our room. My wife needed to stop by the ladies' room. I sat these two glasses down, and I just, you know, kind of looking at the drinks, big chunk oh. of food inside oh. the glass. Oh, I'm glad yeah. I did not take a sip out of it. Oh, I'm man. glad I didn't, a big chunk of food inside the glass had not been cleaned. One of the mornings Beach, where we huh? went to get some breakfast or brunch one morning, we sat down at this table and there was a, a couple sitting beside us. They got up and left shortly after we sat down. So normally when you're on a cruise ship, you see those people coming up, cleaning those tables off like ASAP. That dirty stuff sat on that table from the moment we sat down till we left. When we left, their dirty stuff was still sitting on that table. I like to interject. <laughs> there was a waiter that came by to pick up the dirty stuff that was sitting next to us, but I guess he couldn't decide where to put the dirty stuff. So he literally picked up the plate and put the plate back down. I have a video of it. You'll see it in here. Yep. Dirty stuff sitting beside us. We get up. Our dirty stuff now sits beside that dirty stuff. Yep. It was yeah. at one point at during that same exact meal. Uh, my wife had something in a coffee cup, I think. And uh, the guy, my wife's like, hey, would you, can I get another cup? And the guy was looking around and went and grabbed one off another table. And I remember his comment when he came back. I couldn't tell if it was sarcastic or not. He said, is this one good enough for you? Or something like that. Yeah. He was like, yeah. no, no kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Guys, I, I'm not that girl, but I'm not finna drink out no dirty club, cups. Yep. yep. Not finna eat off no dirty silverware. I'm not very picky, guys. Yep. I'm very, I mean, like like I said, I can, I can let things slide. Yep. But if it's going in my body, I can't let it slide. That's right. Yeah. That morale was so low um, that, you know, some of those staff members, we could see them kind of arguing back and forth with each other. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, getting yeah. snippy with the, with the customers, to be honest with you. And, I mean, now that I think about it, I guess it's really not their fault because, you know, I mean, it is, but it's not, you know, they probably were just tired. Yeah. Tired. The actual Major D, who just supposed to be over the waiters, had an argument with a waiter right next to us while we're sitting beside these dirty table of stuff. And he's over there and he's like, what do you think? I'm supposed to do? Yeah. I mean, the gestures and everything. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was, 
Yeah. A lot of dirtiness. Uh, I think there's a video that you're probably going to see here real soon uh, about an ice cream cone that was so freshly dropped on the floor that it was still sliding across the floor at the same time. So part of that, part of that, we're going to talk about it. Part of that is some of the people that we had on the ship. Now, yeah. Y'all didn't act right. Now we're we gonna get we're gonna get to it, but we're gonna we're gonna come back to it. Y'all we, didn't we, act right. Some of y'all some of y'all didn't act yeah. right now. Now we talked about uh uh Happy Cole, the great, 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 great comedian. Oh, uh boy. that's one end of the spectrum. We're on the issues now, we're y'all. We're still on the issues, y'all. It's but the, a lot of the issues. other end of the spectrum was another comedian. Of course, we're not gonna say his name. Horrible. I probably could have went up there and grabbed that mic and got more laughs. He, he came up there and he said, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to be uh, doing this tonight, guys. I, I, something happened with the schedule and so on and so forth. And he got up there and you could just tell he was tap dancing. And uh, yeah, when you saw people starting to get up and leave. You, when you- a scooter backs <laughs> up, it's time for you to go to. It's time for you to go to. I, I said, I will not let him waste 30 minutes of my time. And I got up. That, I was that's like, right. no, no. We were in another, uh, the comedy club. What do they call the comedy club? Uh, punchliner. Punchliner. Oh, and you know, gosh. every time you go to the punchliner, you want to get the drink called the, the punchliner. Because they only yeah. sell it in there. I think it was probably one, maybe two, but I'm pretty sure it was one person in there trying to take drinks for the entire audience. And he's, he's like, hey, sir, can we get, he's like, wait, I gotta, I'll, come, I'll come back. Never. Yes, he did say, he said, I'll come back to you. Is that okay? And I said, okay, because he had a little notepad. The front page was full, flipped, and then he was on to the next page near the bottom. This mug, when he, <laughs> when this mug, he went and got, finally he went and got the drinks for everybody. Uh, not me yet. Not me. Not me. Remember he said he going to come back to me. He go get the drinks for everybody. He comes to me and say, did you, did you order for me? He's lost. <laughs> he's standing in front of We would like us. to have had ordered a drink, but we get Yeah, it. he's standing in front of us and I can't even see the comedian because uh, he's lost. <laughs> and he's trying to find the people. To give them their drinks. Yep. And here's a little note, Carnival. Most people had the drink package. Yes. Why are we signing Why? these stupid receipts? Why? Why? You're wasting paper. If we want to give a tip to the person, we're going to give the person a tip. You're wasting paper. Stop. Because you know how long I counted one waiter delivering a drink. Then he had to go through his thing and find which receipt belonged to that person Get the pen, give it to that person, wait on the person to sign the paper, get the paper back. Then now he can proceed to deliver the other drinks yep. and repeat the same process. Please stop with those paper receipts. Yep. If you got the drink package, no receipt. I don't care what no cruise receipt. line you are. We don't need paper receipts no anymore, receipt. y'all. I mean, because they give you not just one. It's, most of the time it's like three. And you're, I, you're I wasting time. And, and yeah, yeah, they probably don't want people arguing over... I didn't get 15. Yep. Maybe that's what it is. But yep. I mean, if somebody, I don't know. I I would hope that most people have integrity to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Whatever. Yep. When they say you, you about done, you know? Yep. 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 No, but so get rid of the receipts, man. It's already <laughs> hot out there. You're trying to get your drink, be gone. The, the, the AC ain't working in the clubs and in the elevator. So you're hot and you want to get back to your room. You want to take a shower, but that becomes difficult when you got a piece of soap. That's been the same piece of soap that you had when you got on the ship. And you use it so much that it's about the size of a nickel. I got a picture. <laughs> that you have to leave a note, a sticky note for the room attendant to say, can you please give me a piece of soap? Okay. Mind you guys, he's partly telling you the story. We bring our own soap to shower with. So we're already saving carnival money because we're not using y'all's little push right. blue soap and shampoo. We bring our own products. But for the hand soap, that's the only the thing hand we soap. use carnival. And Yeah, I'm talking about the hand that's soap. That's the only thing we were using carnival. Yep. And here we are on day four with a piece. <laughs> no, it might have been day five. Like we were almost finished with the cruise with a piece of soap like this big. And I'm like... Is it that, are they that hard up to not share with people who are not using their other soap one more bar of soap? Yeah. We're yeah. on there seven days. There's a lot of people on that cruise. Just give me one more bar. Everybody's please. hot. Just one bar. Bothered. 
you just start to get frustrated on a cruise when you're supposed to be happy on, you know, and I think for the first time, I think I heard you say, you know, I feel like I'm about to get back to my old self. I think my, my wife was ready to fight. <laughs> yeah. The, honestly, this was the first cruise that I ever had to say, watch your holiness, watch, watch your character. Um, because the attitudes of the servers, the attitudes of the clientele on there, I really had to tiptoe. Like one night, we literally was like, "We're not going to go get pizza." Yeah, we 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 won't. We going to go get go. pizza is kind of like, man, you, you need yeah. to just go ahead and put on you some just some, a drive by, just some fighting just, clothes, just, yeah, stuff like that. Speaking of fighting, there we were at a bar at the Alchemy, which is one of our favorite spots to hang out. Um, yeah. You know, when it comes to bars, and we just heard these ladies, and everybody was kind of having a drink in their hand, and they just started lamenting about some of the experiences they had on the ship. And so, you know, the rumor mirror starts to happen and there, there were conversations happening about fights that were breaking out on the ship. Uh, I think it was a day before we heard an announcement over the intercom. Security, security, please go to room number blah, 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 blah. There was uh, rumors that 14 people were, were booted off the ship at, at the, one of the ports at Costa, Maya. Uh, at Costa Maya and were not allowed to get back on. There was a rumor that there were five people thrown into the brig, which is like the jail that's on the ship. Uh, we saw working police dogs going around sniffing for marijuana. We lots of people talking about marijuana. I think one time smelled, it was sleep though. Smelled marijuana. It was what? Oh, one, one of the dog, dog the dog was sleep too. Uh, he had low morale and he was tired too. <laughs> dog was sleep. The dog was sleep. I actually witnessed my lovely bride almost go back into her teacher mode because the shit was just rampant, you know what I mean? And teenagers are gonna be teenagers. Got that. As my wife said on a previous episode, if you're going to be on vacation with your kids, vacation with your kids. You know, don't just leave them out to just go fend for themselves because they could potentially roll with bad crowds. We heard incidents of uh, of kids uh, on the basketball court and other kids, you know, trying to take the basketball, slap it out their hands and and just kids potentially getting into fights. We were walking down the hall one night, couldn't could barely get to our room. And I'll yeah, I'll turn this yeah, over to turn, you. Turn it on. I'm I'm waiting. I'm sitting <laughs> over here. Y'all see me already. Tag, 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 tag me. <laughs> tag me in. All right. He's he's going through this stuff quickly. Cause it, it was a lot, guys. If anything, you're watching this video and you're saying, Whoa, this was a lot. Yep. You're paying to go on carnivals at that time, largest ship, during the most happiest time of the year, Christmas. And you get Nothing but the opposite. Yeah. I was not impressed by the ship because the ship was not well taken care of. Things were already breaking. I saw missing handles on chairs. Yep. The chairs have certain handles. It's a new ship. Dents in the wall. Dirty, stained carpet. I don't know why they put light. It's like a light cream and blue carpet. Don't know why they did that. Stained in the uh Grand Spectrum Theater stained in the hallways yep. all around. It is not well taken care of. It is not well manned. Now, Carnival has guidelines. Yep. They're trying. They're trying. Marijuana rules, uh, curfew for the teens at 1 a.m., mm -hmm. which should be later, should be earlier, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. because you know they're going to press up again. So let's go ahead and just say it's midnight so that the pressing won't start, right? Like my husband said, clientele, cousins, we have a role in this too. Because just because you're on vacation, it doesn't mean it's a free for all. Right. And I could just have at it, throw stuff this way, throw stuff that way, treat stuff this way. Go in bathrooms and smear poop all over the bathroom. I met a lady in a bathroom who had just come out of a bathroom that looked like that. And she was about to vomit. I saw signs on the door because I guess the workers didn't want to deal with it and said, this bathroom is in, this stall is in the process of beautification, something like that. I didn't have my phone in the bathroom. Don't take my phone in the bathroom. Mm. There also was incidents of people walking into bathrooms with people. Because for some reason, the handicapped stalls, which the ladies are going to use, because we only had, the, the ladies' restroom only had two stalls and a handicapped one. Yeah. That's it. And so we got to use it. All right, we have lines. 
So you got to wave your hand. This th freaking thing won't close. You wave your hand to open the door. It's, it's supposed to be a and good thing. And you wave your hand to yeah. try to lock it, and it doesn't do it. it so it ladies are literally time. using the bathroom, having someone look out so that they don't look in the bathroom. <laughs> like, that's literally what we had to do. Yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and rewind it back to these kids. If you are on vacation with your kids, you are on vacation with your kids. Bottom line, yes, they have Camp Ocean. They have the teen center, things like that. When they're doing activities in there, got you. That's your free time. Mm -hmm. But when those kids are outside of any of those zones or parameters or being supervised, they need supervision. Yes. They need supervision. We're going back to our room, and it's nearing 1 a.m., which is the curfew. And teens are held up in our hallway. Not even, and, and teens these days don't even have the respect like we used to. Excuse, I'm sorry, ma'am, moving out the way. Mm -hmm. I'm carrying something. He's carrying something. I was like, excuse us. Yeah, we have to do that. One of the young ladies said, I, I apologize for my friends, but even she did it jokingly, but I respect that. They're being loud, making noises. I turn back. I wait, wait, wait it. but why? Why? <laughs> Why were they being loud and making noises? What I didn't know at first. What, I'm going to get right. to that. They were being loud. They were being making noises. And I was like, you know what? I'm tired of the disrespect. Because it had been more than one incident. Like he said, kids tr mistreating other kids, kids throwing stuff, doing st just all kinds of stuff. And so at this point, I'm like, here. I turn around. I'm in teacher mode now. I raised that eyebrow and I'm like, <laughs> I'm giving y'all five minutes before I call security to this hallway. Five <laughs> minutes, clear it out. We, 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 we wait on our friend. Man, we wait on our friend. I said, what you waiting on your friend for? Five minutes. I said, you, did you hear me? Five minutes, that's it. I went into my room. I said, Siri, set a timer for five <laughs> minutes. I was pissed. I was livid. Because other nights, we've been listening to this running up and down the hallway, laughing, giggling, being out on the balcony. Who in the parents are buying kids' rooms? It's supposed to be somebody 21 or older in there. No, it's not. It's just the kids in the rooms. And on top of that, had a balcony room just like us. Mm -hmm. So we go out to our balcony. They over there playing with their balcony. Three girls are in the room next to us. I don't know how I started hearing a boy. Mm -hmm. But at any rate... I get in the room with him, and he said, babe, you know what was going on, right? I was like, no, nah, what, what was up? He said, they were making moaning noises. They're picking at who's inside. And I said, you're kidding me. I said, man, no. Nah. I said, I would have did something different, like knock on that door or something to break that up. Yeah. We heard so many reports of underage sexual activity. And we're not talking about, now you, you guys might be like, well, I mean, they 17, they 18. No, them kids that I was running off, they was probably just 13, 12, 13. They weren't that big. And most kids are humongous. Yep. Yeah, I will say this is probably the first time I think we were like, I don't know if we want to let them just leave our bags outside the door and let them stay there. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're going to go back and check to see if they put our bags outside the door. Even the freaking comedian said a joke that said, huh, you got to watch where you go at on this ship. There's neighborhoods. I seen somebody <laughs> about to get robbed over there at, uh, what was it? Uh, Shaq Big Chicken. Shaq's Big Chicken. Shaq Big Chicken. But he, honestly, he ain't lying. Mm -mm. He ain't lying. That's why we didn't go one night to get pizza. You got security all around. Security stands at the like, pizza line. Security, is they post themselves at the pizza line. That's how unruly it was starting to get at some point. Now, as you talked, I was kind of looking through the list, making sure that we kind of talked about most of the, the heavy hitters. I know that's a lot. We started with a short yeah, list I'm of, of pros and things that were good, and then we hit you with that list of issues or, as she calls it, areas of improvement, and there's a lot. Um, I will say, overall, for us, we know what carnival experiences are supposed to be like. We know what they had been like, and this was not it. Carnival celebration over Christmas that was not the cruise. It was not the cruise. Um, it was not. It was not. And so I tell y'all this with all certainty. And I know you guys probably are like, 
was it that bad? <laughs> it was that bad. Here's my card. Gold member card. I ain't cutting mine up. I'm done. You go. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with Carnival. Hey. Because I'm done. He's done. He's done. He's done with Carnival. We hey. will not sell Carnival Cruises. Wait a minute. Again. You, you let mess not. around. They mess around and give us one of them little specials babe, and them bills now. <laughs> babe, we were on at the time their largest ship. Yeah. Which was mishandled, undermanned, yeah. dirty, rambunctious, yeah. filled with security issues. Mm-hmm. And we haven't even talked about the fact that I lost something. It was found. Yeah. And we were so happy, but we thought about it and it started to be a suspicious situation. Something very highly valuable. Yes. Yes. And yes. Yeah. And we're not talking about. Yeah. I, and I, I'm not even going to talk about it, yeah. but we were so happy to have it back that we didn't even really think about like. Something special how, about how, how it got missing in the first place. Yeah. How did that go? Missing? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Um, it, it just was too much. And this, yeah, we had a little issue here. Like I was saying, we still enjoy being together because we love to just be on the water. We love to just visit beaches and mm-hmm. warm climates and things like that. But it was more aggravating for us to leave our cabin than to stay in it. Yep. That's right. That, that That's the right. piece I got was in my cabin. Yep. After it got new sheets and stuff. Yeah. And I wiped everything down. As you do with the feedback sandwich, you start off with something good, bury all the other issues and stuff in the middle, and you end with something positive. Uh, I do, since we brought it up, I do want to give a shout out to the security personnel on the ship um, that actually helped us find our valuable item. Um, they actually worked very diligently to to get it back for us. So I do want to say thank you. Thank you to those folks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do feel like, th- I think things are in place. It's just, y'all got to remember, if you're going to have 6,000 people on the sea, you've got to have the proper manning for it. Fact. That's the overall And problem. I'm going to be problem. honest with you. Everybody knows your clientele. You know that Carnival is going to be more of a family cruise, which means you're going to have more kids, um, just more age groups and things that could go on, right? So just keep in mind all of your clientele, right? Like I'm not on some adult cruise where they are going to like hopefully do better, be better, right? Um, So Carnival, just please look into like the manning for that. Um, I know y'all are breaking, the, coming down on some stuff, but it, it's got to, it's, it needs a little bit more. It needs a little bit well, more. Carnival, I will tell you, uh, so long. we tried to choose the fun, but, uh, now we're going to see us. if we can choose a different cruise line. We are moving on to another cruise line. So if y'all have recommendations for other cruise lines yes. out there, other, uh, cruise ships you want to try, take a look at, maybe get on other areas because I think we're done exploring the Caribbean as well. We want to move on to the other areas as well. But bottom line is if you have other cruise lines that you want to recommend to us, please drop them in the comments and let us know which ones we need to explore. And I apologize for those of you who are loyal to Carnival. This is just our truth. This is our experience. This is our experience. It's our truth. Right. And you know, we were loyal to Carnival too because we this is our seventh time. Yep. And we if, wasn't lucky though. If you are in denial... Just because you have achieved status X, Y, or Z and you're just going to defend it all the way to the end because you want to keep rising in your status, just think about it, right? Do you want to continue to get subpar quality service, so on and so forth, uh, or do you want to try something and get your money's worth? And I'm, I'm going to close with this. I know the video is way long, but those of you who are interested, you're going to watch it because you want to know the real, real. And I'm giving you the real, real. Promise. We met a guy who had been on 24 Carnival Cruises. Oh, yeah. He was on there to not only celebrate Christmas, but his 53rd birthday as well. He was highly disappointed. Yeah. He said, I'm about to go remove my gratuities, and I encourage you guys to do that as well. He was whatever that diamond platinum, whatever it was. He was the highest status. The highest status. He was thoroughly disappointed. And 
he said, you know what? I'm going to go with motor gratuities. I have a heart. And I'm like, babe, let's just pay it. Let, we already paid it. Let's just let it go. I won't lie to you. We removed the gratuities and we just handed out money to the, to people, the people that deserved it. That did the job. Absolutely. That's right. That's what we did. Because and, and that's that says something because we will tip you even on a bad day. Hundred percent. We will tip. We're gonna tip our people. Yep. We're gonna tip people who take care of us. We're gonna tip people who seem to have passion about what they're doing. We that's we right. we just hand out tips like yep. free. And we even had money to give more tips on top. Mm -hmm. So we start, we reallocated that money to give to the people who provided the service we were used to. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well. Well, that was a lot. Man. It was a lot. You got a lot off your chest. I feel lighter now. Ooh, I feel. <laughs> I'm heated up again. I'm. I, somebody owed me a cruise. That's all I know. I, I'm old a cruise. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. I know this was an episode of uh, pros and cons, but we hope that you got cons. something out of it. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we out.